Welcome to In These Times, a multi-platform podcast and YouTube broadcasting channel for mental health issues. We want to address mental pain and emotional suffering by bringing you information that can alleviate your distress. And you may make some important mental shifts that bring back your light, your love, your hope. Please use the contact us button on our website to let us know your deepest troubles and concerns with your mental health. Help us to help you. The pandemic and the resulting lockdowns have had devastating effects on societies across the world. In the UK alone, six million people are waiting for physical treatment and one in four of us are affected by a mental health problem. And here's another alarming fact. Four million people are struggling financially and a further four million are at risk of developing a mental illness as a direct result of their financial situation. So it's become a vicious circle of financial damage and worsening mental health, leading to desperate decisions that put you in more financial trouble than before. In these times, people driven to financial desperation are seeking help from advisors like Zoe Blythe, who is a benefit specialist for the Citizens Advice Bureau. Zoe, welcome to you. And um, you are, I know, in a position to tell us just how awful life can be as a result of the pandemic and the lockdowns, when people have got themselves into quite serious muddles over money, and that often leads to mental ill health. And I know you spend most of your day trying to sort that lot out, but it is pretty horrendous at the moment, isn't it? Yes, people are coming to us with um, numerous problems about all aspects of uh, their financial situation. You know, it's not just debt, but housing and bills and all of those things. And we, we sort of holistic approach and look at the whole situation and try and, and resolve all of these issues. So can we just have a look at the sort of problems they're having? I think one of the real dilemmas you must be dealing with is the fact that uh, a lot of companies and housing associates, all of them, are calling in debt now, whereas they they all had a period where they weren't during lockdowns. That's right. So um, we are seeing a rise in bailiff action and possession proceedings for properties. Um, creditors uh, chasing people for debts, energy companies chasing people for outstanding bills. You know, we, we have seen a rise in, in people coming to us for help with these sorts of issues. When I approached you, Zoe, you, you, were, you were interesting in as much you said one of the problems with mental health problems and depression is that, and I think most people would be honest about this, they you know, they think we'll stay in bed, pull the bedclothes up and not do anything. But of course, that is really disastrous, isn't it? If if you've got debts being called in. Absolutely. That's the worst thing you can do. And I know it's very difficult for people, especially when you know, the is the way. But when you suffer with, with health illness, you, you know, you really do just put your head in the sand or a lot of people do. I mean, many a visit I, I have done to somebody's home and opened three months worth of post for them but and then they often say to me afterwards I, I feel so much better now I feel better now that's been tackled and that we've got a plan to move forward so so the the message is really you're, you're not on your own we will help you with these things we will liaise with the companies you you know especially if somebody's really suffering very badly with their mental health you know we will phone on your behalf and all of those things so Zoe you're in a position where you actually go and see people who have finally made contact with the Citizens Advice Bureau but haven't done anything for a long period of time because they felt so depressed. And that may have been before the pandemic or since the lockdown. But the fact is there are many, many bills there. That's right. And um, unfortunately, since the, the pandemic, we haven't been able to restart our home visits and they're a really important part of our service. 
Um, we hope, obviously, that's you know going to, to to change in the near future. But it really is a good support to people to have somebody come and meet them and go through their paperwork and make phone calls on their behalf, um, because it just feels like they're not on their own anymore. You know, they they really need to feel because we we would come alongside somebody and and be and be of support. We're we're not there to tell them what to do you know we're, we're there to facilitate and 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 resolve the situation yeah it's important that you aren't you, you certainly aren't a bit judgmental so no and what would be the point of that because nothing would happen then so um i'm sure it's a very gentle process with them Yes, absolutely. Because, you know, we do recognise that people have all different struggles in life. And it's very common, you know, especially with somebody who has very poor mental health, they may come to us for help, do a little bit and then become overwhelmed and, and disappear. And, and we will, you know, we'll, we'll try and make contact and, and wait for them to come back and pick up again where we've left off. And if they have reached the stage of the courts uh, wanting to see them, can you go with them to that? It's not something we offer, but other organisations support that um, work. Yeah. So you can get in touch with people who would help yeah. them? Yeah. So if you're talking about, yeah, homelessness things, you, you shelter have court desks in most in most courts. The thing about these all these benefits is that they're, they're like a minefield, aren't they? I mean, if you're unemployed or you're sick, there are so many things to fill in. And if you are in debt, there's also many ways which you can try and sort out that debt. Yeah, so the first thing we tend to do when we look at somebody's situation is what we call income maximisation. So increasing what somebody has coming in and minimising what they have going out. So we do benefit applications as, as a, a regular thing. We will help with the forms, we will help with the forms. And, and if there's any problem with benefit, we will help with challenging the decision. So, you know, the whole process. So, the, uh, and just if people are watching this in some sort of desperation, there are lots of ways to pay off the debt over a period of time, yeah? Yeah, so um, really, generally speaking, uh, the creditors that shout the loudest, so things like credit cards, catalogues, those sorts of debt, which are classed as a non-priority debt, they have the least power. But um, it's really the really important things. If you've got rent arrears or count tax arrears, you really need to seek help as quickly as possible. Right. And we can, yeah, so we would look at somebody's financial situation. Um, one of our debt advisors would, would look at their whole picture and, and discuss various debt solutions to, to resolve their problem. Which is usually successful? Yes, very high success rate, yes. Yeah. So anything from bankruptcy to a debt relief order to um, token payments, which is like basically paying a pound a month towards everything or a, or a debt management plan where you have a surplus in your budget and they would um, calculate payments to each creditor, just small amounts, maybe five or six pounds or 11 pounds a month to, to make so right. that basically people can make their make ends meet. That's encouraging. Let's just have a look at sickness as well. Now, so people may be, uh, be suffering from a mental illness um, to some degree or other where they're not working. So that's the end of unemployment benefit. Or what happens with universal credit at that point? OK, so if somebody is not fit for work, first thing they need to do is get what they call a fit note from the doctor. Um, which is slightly misleading because basically it's a sick note, but it's called a fit note. Um, they need to submit that to Universal Credit and then request a work capability assessment. This is the assessment that the DWP look at to see if somebody is fit for work or whether they have limited capability for work. So that's the first step. And in addition to that, depending on how somebody's health condition or disability affects them, they may be eligible for personal independence payment, which is a, is a non-means tested uh, benefit based on, on health condition and disability. Okay, so they're going to go to this, they're going to be tested. They're going to go before a panel, yes. are they? No, and it's, an, it's one person, one person, yeah. Ah. Because in the past, they've had a very bad press, these, because they've asked um, people who maybe had a mental 
were suffering from a mental illness, if they could wash or make food or something, well, yes, they can yeah. do that, but it doesn't mean they're they're well. Yeah. So when we do, and that that what you're referring to there is personal independence payment assessment, and uh, so. Um, when you're looking at personal independence payment from the angle of mental health illness, it's about prompting and reminding and support and assistance um, rather than your physical capability. So my advice is if you're filling out um, one of these applications based on a mental health illness to get help to do it. From citizens' advice, <laughs> you spend yeah. time doing that. Yes, absolutely. Because you know yes, the questions they're going to ask. Yes. Um, well, it's it's how you word it because you know you've got to word it in a certain way when you're dealing with mental health. Yeah, I'm sure. And um, mm -hmm. you're getting cases now of long COVID. We've had a couple. I've had, I have had a couple, and I have to say they weren't successful with PIP. So I'm sure we're going to see more and more of, of this, though. But, of course, there are appeals, aren't there? And I, I think you're about to tell me that you need to fill the forms in for that too. It's better if somebody has help. So we can act as a representative, and, um, which involves uh, writing a letter of support, basically uh, what you call a submission, so detailing all the relevant points for the tribunal to consider. And then um, I have sat in on um, tribunals with people and sat on telephone call tribunals with people for support in the past. So yes, we do, we do a lot of a lot of appeal work. What's a success rate on appeals? I don't know the official figures, but in my personal experience of um, the work that I've done in this job that I've been in for the last six years as a benefit specialist, um, I must have done. 150 appeals and I've only had one that's not been successful. Well, that says a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. So, and very encouraging for them, somebody who's just been turned down. Mm. Um, yeah, so clearly they need, they need a lot of help about that. And the Citizens Advice Bureau, you've become, I was going to say, almost a lot more sophisticated these days. I mean, you deal with energy providers and people like that. Yeah, so, so um, in Dorset, we have a, a large energy project and those advisors are an amazing team. They they do um, an enormous amount of work. People who are in dispute with their energy provider about their bills. Also looking at um, how people can save money on their energy. Um, you know, if people are on prepayment meters and they, they don't, want to be at helping people get off prepayment meters all all sorts of issues yeah a lot of work important happening too, because a lot of people have knocked up huge bills during the pand the, the lockdowns yeah and are, are very frightened now about how they're going to pay them so uh, anybody that's watching this what would you say to them if they've got themselves into a mess with particularly with benefits of all sorts um can they just you can't walk into a cab anymore presumably no, not yet not 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 in not in our office the best thing to do is to phone the um advice line number which is on the website um and also, you can fill out a form on the website, like an email, which goes through to this supervisor who, and then somebody will call you back. But you're, you're contacted through that, you know, within a couple of days. We will do it very quickly. Mm. So, and, and if absolutely, you know, some of the, I'm sure there's some offices that are, that are open, you could knock on the door and at, at worst, somebody would take your phone number and call you back. So there's help is there. We're working. Right. But so to give people a bit of hope, um, you know, for, we want to do that on in these times. So whatever kind of state they've got to owing a lot of money, if they're not well, they've got it's got as far as the law. One way or another, you are able to either help yourself, well, yourselves or to get somebody who would take on the legal process. Well, we don't. Yeah, so with the legal, so we, we do have some support with legal stuff, but but we don't, we're not a legal service. So, but things like, so, you know, like council tax, when it goes to bailiffs, we would deal with that. Um, and we often 
liaise with bailiffs on on behalf even when they're on somebody's doorstep you know we, we've spoken to bailiffs on on you know so our advisors are all very experienced and knowledgeable and know the law and know where people would stand that you know really the the advice is just ask for help you know we we've seen pretty much every scenario um sure. and our advisors are all very professional very highly experienced um, and very knowledgeable and very thorough. And, and I think we provide an amazing service, to be honest. Right. So if someone's going through a rough time with their mental health, what would your advice be? I know it's difficult when, when life is overwhelming. And But if you can't speak on the phone, you know, if, even if that is too difficult, just send through an email via the website and we, we can we can do quite a lot by email. I mean, obviously it helps if we can talk, but if, if, if in that feels too difficult, rather than do nothing at all, just send email, you know, we can do things by post over the internet, you know, over email. Um, we can, we can really try and, and make, try and make things better for, for people. So it's a very rewarding job really, isn't it Zoe? For you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I it is it has its moments, but when you get a really good win, you know something that's been really unfair, um, and you've managed to sort it out, or somebody's you saved somebody from eviction, you know you do feel you're doing your, your bit. <laughs> we, I we, say. You know, we all, yeah. Well, so. fantastic stuff, and thank you very much. It's been very good advice, and I'm sure it's helped a lot of people today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. In These Times is entirely based on your participation and your involvement. Please use the contact us button on the website to let us know your thoughts. Please also make a donation so we can go on bringing you more broadcasts. Help us to help you.